There it is. Back battery set. Front battery set. Hey everybody, I showed y'all in a previous video about this scooter. It was a little real brief, and if you watched the whole video, you got to see something on it. And the video was about one of these. And you can go look at the previous video. I'll put a link or something up there. And you'll see where I used a, typically used for a basement, macerator toilet, $150 item, and then used like a $40 tank on it from uh, La Home Depot. Where I made that, there's a special fitting that allows you to go horizontally. Of course, you want to give yourself a little bit of fall. All right, so Emma and Ida are out here with me, and we have a 36-volt Razor little bike, little electric bike. It goes about 18 to 20 miles per hour, and with my 190-pound butt on that seat right there, it will hit about 18. With Daniel on it, it'll hit about 20, 21. So it's doing a lot better with less weight. However, distance, they claim 12 miles. Um, it will probably do it, but man, when it gets past the eight mile mark, it is struggling and it's lost a speed of about four miles per hour. So I figured a solution to it. Now, you're gonna like this. 40 volt Black & Decker batteries. You get a pair of them for like 40 something dollars, three amp hour. Don't be surprised or upset by the amp hour. It's not related to what we're doing here. This can draw down to 90% power. The lead acid batteries in here, and you can see I've already taken the cover off. So if you've not seen inside of a razor, that's what's in it. It has three 10 amp hour batteries. Three of them. And they're ran to make 36 volts. Okay, and there is where we're going to tie into it, and I'll show you why. But you can't just do this like you think. You can't just add a lithium battery to lead acid. Do not do that. The safety features in this thing will cause it to go bad quickly, and you could do first cell damage. First cell damage is in your batteries where your first cell on your negative side. So you don't want to do that. That would be the cell that's in this bank right here. All right. Not the whole battery. Just normally there's the cell. Fuse it out. All right. So what we have is a rotary cam. Now, if you don't know anything about these, this is a basic 20 amp. Now, it's 20 amp at 120 volt, and it's good for about 14 amps um, on the test that we pulled on it at the uh, 36 volts. So, we're, we're good for about probably 14 and a half amps. Now, this motor does not pull 14 and a half amps. So, it, 10 amp batteries, get it? So, the thing is, is that the way that you wire this, I want to show you this, and I want you to take a good mental picture. You see where it says one, three, five, seven. Now what I've done is I branched them together, okay? And then they have two 12 gauge wires stranded coming out of them. Now, over here, I put back battery, a B, and front battery, an F. So when the switch turns forward, it'll show front battery on the switch and back. Now, in this compartment, on a razor, you have your controller. This is your throttle controller right down here. And they don't get hot. They, they, I've ran this thing hard, pulled the top off, and it was just gently warm. It wasn't really hot. Um, you have your, your uh, switch that switches it on and off. You have your charge port, and you have a few safety features like you have an inline, just simply a bridge in here, just a fuse. And it doesn't matter where you put it. You could put it here if you wanted to. You have a fuse. Now, I don't have to have a fuse when I mount this other battery with it. I don't have to have that. Now, what I've done is I've pre-done over here for the switch, and you can see it's protected right here by these bars, and we're going to run 12-gauge extension cord through here, up here. I pre-drilled some holes, and it's going to mount the battery. It's going to mount back here under the seat. So now I've unbolted the seat. Now, y'all don't usually see me do this in my videos. Deeply prepared. <laughs> so, and then I have two pre-tapped holes for where we're mounting taking nothing more than a piece of three-quarter plywood, we're going to have these items. Now, everything I've got here, everything in here, you'll be able to get if you follow the links below. I put links to where I sourced all this. Um, one spot, this is 28 bucks. One spot, I got it, it's like 16. 
One spot, these are $49, and one other spot, they're like $74. So, I mean, just showing you the difference. This is a 3D printed item, and one of the things that you want to do, now, rough surface, you'd be using this for a tool. The one thing about 3D printed items is they're fairly durable, but I've got a little secret here, shoe goo. Now, what I'll do is I'll put just a thin film of shoe goo on here, and what that does is that prevents fracture from vibration. And then I'll just stick it on the wood and let it tighten up with the screws. So you can see all the screw holes have been pre-drilled. They're ready to go. I'm trying to make this easy. So we're going to go ahead and put these parts like this together. I've notched the little wood sections out to where they make over these welds to where this piece is going to fit here. And your battery will clearly slide in and out under your seat. And you're not supposed to run these out in the wet rain and everything else. They'll be okay in a brief moment. They're fairly well sealed up, but water will get in them. There's no big, there's no big gasket here, you know, going around to prevent water. And actually, believe it or not, it sets up just enough to allow airflow to pass through there to help cool that motor controller. Now, of course, this is the simple little Da Ying, it's a brand, Da Ying motor. Okay, so it's a 350 watt motor. And the uh, controller, even though the motor 350 watts is extremely close to 10 amps, 9.62, the controller will only feed it a maximum of about 310. Now, if you want to buy a little razor that's got lithium batteries in it, you're going to pay about $1,200. But this one, I get at Walmart. Look below. I'm going to put where I get it at. It's about $50 cheaper than most of them at Amazon. Yeah, Walmart. No joke. All right, now using this extremely old meter, I have located where my terminals functionally should be. And my garage cell item, isn't that cool? It was like 25 years old, still in the box, brand new. Yeah, that's kind of odd. So let's get this mounted, and I'll show you these batteries, and I'm going to show you the wiring steps. All the materials that you see here are going to be used in it. Here is the bolts that will be used going down in here and attaching it to that metal frame and you can see right there I pre-did them, pulled them back out so you guys make it easy here is the 12 gauge exterior grade cord now yes it has three strands but we're only going to be using a black and a white just like you see right here that's it and that's uh, commonly how you would use alternating but we're going to just follow that process cheap, easy stuff you find around the house you're going to be needing some drill bits you're going to be needing some different drivers. You're going to be needing like an extension. In this case here, to get down around that right there, to get that screw in, you're going to need a, some kind of extension, unless you've got a special skinny drill. Now, over here, taper bits, or what they call stepper taper bit. I call them taper bits. I've been around since the 70s. Um, they actually had four sides to them back then. Now they're just two, but stepper bits today. Um, a kit for four of those is only about 20 bucks. They're worth it. They'll go sheet metal. They'll go all the way up to, I think, uh, what, Daniel, 16th inch? Eighth inch. Eighth inch metal. They'll, yeah, whatever the depth of this will be, they'll, they'll bore that out. So, charger, removable batteries, permanently installed, and later we're going to make some type of little cover. So I will have a cover that will go over it to keep the rain out or something, but we don't, does, we don't want to put this out in the rain at all. But if it got that, we want to prevent it. So now I'm going to go ahead and put these parts together. Screws, bolts, caps. I use these underneath. They don't want to vibrate. They don't want to vibrate loose. They're very good. And just a standard crimper right there. And then here's all the parts. And I'm going to show you real quick. Pay attention. Don't jump off of here. You'll see these are your numbers up, that'll be up top on this switch. Now go get the switch I'm showing you because it might be different in a different switch. All right, this is the ones you bridge together. So when the switch turns this way, it feeds power down to here. It won't feed power back, okay? So it doesn't feed power back to that side. When you switch the switch to zero, of course, there's nothing. You switch it over here. It only allows power to go from here all the way through here. And, of course, it doesn't feed it backwards to that. Now... I've marked it where my top point is for my uh, little handle there, my little knob. And then I want you to look here carefully. You see this? You see that little mark right there? You see that open spot? And you'll see two little snaps on both sides. This little face plate 
you got to be careful it'll snap right back on and then this goes over the top and there's a little tiny screw right there for this so you'll be able to put it in and I'll show you how it mounts in when it goes in there your flat surface goes towards and your little raised surface for that identifier plate that goes out so all right now I'll get some of this put together and come right back into the video and show you what we got all right guys now so far we got some of this set up now before you get worried that there's going to be a problem I want you to understand that this is the charger this is the charger that goes to the little scooter okay output 36 volts if you put a meter on it just like any battery charger this is actually outputting a max of 45 so if you're worried that your controller is not going to handle this don't over here maximum of 42 that's less than the 45 that this thing here will actually put out so this is 36 volt output that's just a number but its reality is that lead acid you have to charge much higher than the static voltage you're wanting to achieve so just remember that and that controller has that voltage applied to it if the switch is on and they tell you to turn the switch off but a brand new hotly charged set of batteries will be 43 to 45 volts when you unplug it and turn the switch on because you're in a hurry don't worry this is fine now the lithium battery is not going to hurt anything and this is a cheap thing to do this is about twelve dollars this is about fifteen dollars or so the batteries everything like i said below the video i'm going to put you a really good list of parts um, you can probably source and find everything else that's laying here now you can see i've cut and removed the green wires away from this now the reason i'm using this is because it's really durable rocks could hit this it's not going to get hurt and we are going to zip tie them in a few more places and you can see what i did here i used shrink style butt connectors the wires don't make them tight leave them a little tiny bit of slack they'll be fine they won't pull loose and i put a little shoe goo around the wire terminals there and then to keep it from bouncing loose i put a little bit here where these wires go together and this is my hot wire and this is my common or my okay this is my negative uh, people are going to say something and this is my positive now we're going to take there these wires here from the battery now so that the battery doesn't risk fire or an arc we're going to go ahead and pull the fuse now it's a 30 amp fuse in it but it only needs a 15. they put a 30 in there so you don't end up getting in the damn board and working on it they don't want you doing that whoops okay so now here's your cover here's your other parts as we described and I've currently got it wired up right now. Now, I want you to look very careful. If you want to take and zip that snapshot, there you go. That's the wires going to the battery. Just make sure that when you start, you start with your switch in the center position up. Now, you can flip that around just about any way you want it. It can mount because it's a square piece. It'll mount anywhere, and your screw goes in the center, tightens down. It will go anywhere. All right, but look how I got it. Look at your combination of wires. Now look carefully at this and know when you flip around, they don't join the two banks together. If you wire it like I've got it, it doesn't happen. Okay? So there, get, get you a snapshot of that. All right, now and what I've done there is because I've been able to turn my switch and point that way towards the batteries, I've marked that as front and marked it upside down and both so I won't make a mistake, and that is back. That's this one up here. Okay. So what we got is this battery here. I'm going to have Daniel hold this, and I'm going to show you my next step. I'm going to take and disconnect the battery right there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to cause any problems with any stored power in the capacitors because there's two large plate capacitors in that. I don't want to cause any problems there, okay? So now that's loose. We'll get rid of this here warning stuff. It's going to be in the way. I can actually just pull it off. All right, now, individually cut the wires. You want to make sure the wire will reach down to where this is going here on the side. Now, you can look over here on the side, and you can see where I've made the holes. And before I get too far, you just take that, give yourself about an eighth of an inch from it bumping that metal so that you make sure it's clear, and then you just mark your holes, center them up, and then drill them, and I believe the hole size is 3 16 Okay, so there you go. All right, back to cameraman there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself enough room here to connect again. 
with these wires and I'm going to give as much of this wire as I can for my needs to connect it to here okay so we'll start with the hot wire here that's the positive and we'll start we'll go over here to that and then I'll just pull that off and you'll see I didn't leave myself a whole lot of wire but I don't need a whole lot of wire now I'm going to strip these and you see they're tinned copper it's not aluminum it's tinned copper you can see down in there Get a little extra there all right and then I'm gonna strip these these are 12 gauge going to 14 gauge so guys don't worry you're not gonna be losing any power here and the runs are so short it doesn't really matter here all right so we agreed that the black would be the plus the positive wire and give them a twist together and then I'm gonna put one of these on there because they're notorious about not really wanting to fall off and we'll put a crimp you want to go just at the bottom you see how I'm going in there just at the bottom and give it a full hard crimp all right now you see how that's in there and we'll do that repeating now remember that's the wires coming out of the bottom to this side and that's the side plug going to the controller so there's your power side your input now we're going to take this here match them up on the end get that crimp on there if you don't want to use butt connectors you can solder these if you don't want to use cap connectors you can same thing all right so now to make this a little easier on me here we get these wires around here I'm gonna go ahead and tuck these up tuck these out of my way give them a little bend get them out of my way now they're not hot because I've taken the fuse out and then this is a pretty loose nest of wires here. So I'll get my main power wire and I'll just move that out of the way. And I'll kind of lift them up. And then I'm going to sneak this down in here like so. And I'm not going to put screws in it yet. I'm going to leave it up at an angle just like that. See? And we're going to loosen the screws out until they stop. They're Phillips. Number one Phillips. Notice a small tip. All right? Until you can feel them kind of give a little resistance right there and give them a little tap to make sure that they're opened inside there we go now knowing that this is my positive and this is my negative repeated process underneath make sure everybody sees that see we're going to set that in there like that and i'm going to tip it up just enough and i'm going to do one wire at a time so you take these little 14s and they'll work fine Strip about a little over three-eighths of an inch, close to a half. And you're going to feed that right in there on the positive side. See? Positive side. And you'll tighten that down. Do one at a time. Do not start tearing them apart. Unless you're doing them one at a time. You're going to firm that up. Don't try to strip that screw out. It holds well. Some of the other ones I bought, they, they're worthless. But these have been real good. So, and hold your wire well so you don't jerk it loose. You see they put that hot melt on there. Vibration proofing. And you'll see what I do for vibration proofing in addition. So, now that's my hot wire. I'm going to get way over here to the side. Stay away from that even though I've disconnected everything. It's just good practice. We'll tighten that up. Now, we've got that all put together. We have our connector here. It's connected to that cluster you see underneath. And now we'll be able to have this is in the center. It's in other words, it's nothing going on there. And I will snap this back together and it has to go underneath. So you gotta kinda see how those gotta move in there a little bit. This ain't the first one I've done, guys. That's why I'm teaching you now, and you can see you can just tuck down just like that. Now, what I will do as a rule of thumb is you see my little acrylic shoe glue? I'll put a little dab of that. And the reason I do that is vibration, just like the same reason they did that on the terminals here. That's actually the same material, believe it or not. It's just gray so that the inspector 
at uh, the Yang Bang factory can detect that it's been done right. All right, so there we go there. Let that get tucked down in there. And then you don't want to use it because it can be electrolytic. You don't want to use it directly on metal contacts. So we won't worry about that too much. It is mechanically connected. Now, all of this is wired. It's wired back up to here. And your switch is wired in down here. Now, you see that hole, that square? You're going to make sure that's upright. You're going to make sure that, like you see me, I made a little black mark there where my switch is in the center position. And I'm going to now slide that on. And we will run in the screws on it. Let me get a light on there for y'all guys. Hold on just a second here. Torch on. There we go. And we'll run the screws in. Get them all finger started so you don't hurt it. Now this is real thin material. It's ABS, but it's real thin. All right, so you're just going to put these screws in. There we go. Get them started. And sometimes your hole ain't perfect. You got to work that around a little bit. There we go. Now you see I got that in <laughs> just barely. Okay. Now we have a drill. I just shoot them in until they touch. Okay, guys. Now get the rest of these put in same process and then we'll put that cover on and I'll show you how that cover snaps boring ass video ain't it all right so just get them on there and just snug okay so we're fixed on good and then I want to check them with the screwdriver and they're also number one thread so just get them firm same way there same way there and there so you have nuts that are uh, integrated into that plastic be careful not to knock them out I might knock one out down there I'll have to check it later so there's your handle you'll notice it has multiple angles so that's the reason I told you to make sure it's dead centered like that okay we're going to put this on there and the reason you're doing that is you're going to have two forms one is your lithium battery two is your original lead acid and the reason that I said put that hole at the top is that notch there means that it's correct that snaps in boom it's in come down a little bit angle right there okay all right, so this will go back on, and then it has a little tiny screw. Don't use a power driver for that. So now what we've done is we've made basically a lithium backup system to add not only additional miles, but a little more speed, quick charge, and a backup system power. So very neat. Now, that's in the center. We'll turn this to here. The switch that's in here is now on, and we have power. Show them up here. You'll see that light dim off. Now I'm going to hit the switch again. Boom. There's power. Now, we'll get a battery, and I'll, I'll, I'll lift it up and spin the motor for you. So you can see it's actually functioning. You see how that is? Right there like that. That's what it looks like. Forward to these batteries. And then this back switch will go to these batteries up top. So in the middle, it's dead. Over here will be that battery up here. Okay? So we're going to leave it there. Put it over here. Ida May is laying there like she's going to sleep for a week. And we're going to put this battery in. And your switch, your switch has nothing to do with this battery up here. Okay? This switch just changes the battery systems that you're using. So now... We'll log that battery in. There it is. It's in place. And I'm going to, uh, here you go, Daniel. Hold it over here on this. I will lift it up. You can see my hand here. I will lift it up. You can see up here that it's got power. Now back down here at the tire. We're on the lead acid batteries down there. I'll lift it up. And... 
See? There. Now, back down here, we're going to switch it over to this battery. So now it's coming off of this battery. Boom. Power switch over here is still on. Listen to the difference in sound. So now you've got that, and you can check these batteries by looking at the side right there. And you can carry a spare battery with you in the back. Now our job is to button it back up, and we'll take Daniel for a ride. That's going to be in another video where we do the mileage on it, and it does work great. So there you go, guys. You see how that works? Don't forget, you've got two uh, nuts that are on the other side here, and then this back end back here is threaded into the metal. So you'll have that threaded in the metal, and up here you'll have two nuts that are going through right there for the board, for your step board. Not a complicated setup, is it? Be sure you pull your fuse. Be, be sure you do it like I showed you here so that you don't have the problem. Now, tuck your fuse back down. Make sure your wires are clear like that, and you're good to go. Now, we'll zip tie some things off, but what do you guys think? Put the seat back on. That'd be an uncomfortable ride, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? All right, and now you got a rechargeable battery to add a two-way selector. That's both off. You can actually leave that on button on if you want to. That right there is the front batteries. Center off, back battery. That's your Eco Smart Scooter. Walmart, Bubba. I buy this. Third one I've done. And so far, man, do they haul ass. So, there. Oh, by the way, you see that light? Ready? See? 36 volt. Boom. Now watch this. It's on the back battery. It don't know the difference. That extra few volts is doesn't matter. And that can run down to about probably what? 10% left in it and still run you down the highway. As long as you're not 300 pounds. But <laughs> those, they'll run down to about 40%. So your actual distance off of 10 amps isn't drastically any different than your six amps you got here. A lot lighter. I wouldn't suggest taking the batteries out of there I'd suggest upgrading what you got. All right, guys, y'all stay tuned. Emma's still around. Looking for another 10 years out of her. 24 is a good age. All right, guys. Right, Daniel? Yep. You're going to ride it? Yep. <laughs> it's going to scare the hell out of me. All right, guys, so you thought the video was over with. Following morning, we didn't think it was over with. So look, check it out. There it is. Back battery set. Front battery set. Back battery set. Not bad.